Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Anna Rosenberg, and today we'll be discussing public speaking confidence with our guest, Duane Smith. Duane is a public speaking coach and professor and the creator of the Empowering Speech program. He helps people organize their minds, compose their words, find their voices, and deliver credible and confident presentations every time they are privileged to speak. His clients include CEOs, CFOs, trial attorneys, studio executives, TV and movie producers, actors, medical doctors, union leaders, police officers, engineers, marketing firms, entrepreneurs, foreign diplomats, and a growing list of motivated children as young as 11 years old, among others. If among others is actually possible with such a list. Welcome to the show, Duane. Thank you. So let's talk about that list of successful people. Tell us about the kind of clients you help. Well, Anna, I'm privileged to help excellent people. Uh, When I started this business, I thought I was creating a business for people who want to climb the ladder, for people that want to sharpen their their number one skill set in life, which is public speaking. However, I was surprised that the people who call me more often than not are already at the top of the ladder. And like you mentioned, uh, CEOs, CFOs, trial attorneys, most of the people that call me are excellent people that just never get complacent. They're always looking for ways to improve. And one thing more often than not people need to improve upon is their public speaking skills. And with that, I'd say the two most popular reasons people call me is one, in this order, they are crippled by fear. Public speaking is the number one fear in life. Second is actually speaking about death, a firefighter or police officer or doctor or anyone that has to tell a loved one that they've lost someone. And then third is actually dying. So people are are horribly frightened when it comes to public speaking. So they call me for help with anxiety. And then the second reason people call me is more often than not, when people are asked to give a presentation, they don't have a plan to proceed. They've just been thrust into a position because of success. Often a new position at work or within the company requires them to lead. And leading requires speaking. And then often people have no plan for how to proceed when it comes to structuring their thoughts and delivering the message. So those would be the two reasons people call me. One, fear. And then two, they have no plan or idea how to best proceed. And I help people do that. I'm curious, how did you get involved in public speaking in the first place? Well, (laughs) it's a long, crazy story. I'm not academic. Um, that is definitely not one of my gifts. I'm traditionally not an academically minded person. I graduated high school with a 1.9 GPA on probation for bad behavior. I failed the first grade because I could not read. I was later diagnosed with dyslexia. My parents, my wonderful parents, my biggest fans next to my wife, my father was an LAPD officer and my mother was a waitress. So they didn't have the financial means to do anything with my learning challenge. So I just kind of passed through the system. I failed algebra a total of five times, and I still never passed algebra. Thank God I don't need algebra for anything. But anyways, I am not an academically minded person. After I got out of high school, I would fail out of three different community colleges before finding myself selling cars. And while I think that was the greatest education with regards to dealing with people and communicating, after all, if you want people to spend their money, you better communicate properly. However, at the age of 22, I did not have the self-discipline or desire to work 60 to 80 hours a week for commission only, so I quit. And at this point, I had received a letter from one of the colleges that I had failed out of saying that if I came back and at least got C's, I could come back as a probationary level student. 
Long story short, the first class I decided to take was public speaking. And ironically, that was the very first class I had failed in college about two out, two years earlier. And in this particular public speaking course, my second attempt at public speaking, my fourth try at community college on a third campus, a lovely woman named Betty Ballou, Professor Ballou, saw something in me that nobody else had seen, and she asked me to join the public speaking team. And as a result, I would travel all over the country with the Valley College speech team, earning various awards for public speaking. That turned into a scholarship to go to the university. That turned into a four-year degree. That turned into an invitation to graduate school to teach and coach speech. And with that said, the past you know, 24 years of my life has been all about public speaking, both speaking on a competitive level and coaching and teaching public speaking at the community colleges and universities, and that would eventually lead to working with professionals. Thank you for, for sharing your story. It's beautiful and it's a, a beautiful example of what's possible. You know, the big topic of uh, our show today is confidence, if you wish. So I'm curious to know, what is your definition of confidence? My definition of confidence is confidence is the attribute needed to seal the deal, to make the sale, to elevate the pitch, to get the vote or persuade the action. Confidence empowers individuals to lead rooms, which is so incredibly important. It is crucial in public speaking. What do you feel are the biggest misconceptions about building public speaking confidence? Well, number one, you're, you naturally have it or you don't. That's confidence. You're naturally a confident person or you don't or you're not. And then second, you are naturally a strong speaker or you are not. These are both misconceptions. While some people are naturally blessed with these qualities, I will argue anyone can acquire them. If they are willing to do the work, they are coachable and they can follow direction. Anybody can be confident and anybody can be a confident speaker. Um, for 20 years as a public speaking coach on various college campuses, I was reminded of this every year. Um, if you, I, I would always, I always, tell students that are interested in competitive speaking, if I have the choice between two students, let's say student A is naturally very physically attractive and he or she has wonderful ability to present themselves, but they can't follow my direction or the direction of the other coaches, we have nothing to offer each other. That's option A. Option B, you've got a student who might look funny, to be honest with you, have a stutter, maybe even a limp, but he or she is willing to follow the direction of the coaches and commit to themselves and to what the coaches direct them to do, he or she can develop confidence, stand on stage, and shine. I had the privilege of observing that for 24 years as a competitive coach. The reason I say um, that in past tense is because I no longer I no longer do that. I've retired from coaching students on a competitive level and moved on to other things. But during my entire career, every year I was reminded at nationals. That's the big competition at the end of the year. I would always have on my team anywhere from one to three special students who at the beginning of the year, you would not look at them and think, wow, he or she looks confident. Wow, he or she's really well spoken. But they proved everybody wrong by doing the work being coachable, following direction, getting to nationals, standing up, and shining. Anybody who's willing to follow direction and commit to themselves can acquire confidence and public speaking skills. And when you put the two together, you have a perfect formula for success, not just on the stage giving speeches, but success in life. Public speaking is so empowering when it comes to confidence. It's just, it's a real life changer. And anybody can experience that if they're willing to follow direction and commit. 
some people believe that public speaking is complicated. Can you speak to that? Yes, that is also very false. Um, and I guess the, the best way to explain that is how my is is kind of uh, how my business came to be. Years ago, between undergraduate and graduate school, I happened to be working out at a a gym in Los Angeles, and I was sharing an exercise machine with a complete stranger. And a, 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 a fairly, uh, I would soon learn that this man was a, a very, a very powerful and famous uh, man here in Los Angeles. I, I won't um, identify him or the organization anyway, but I was just had the privilege of sharing an exercise machine and chatting with a very influential person. And he asked me what I did, and I explained to him that I was involved in competitive public speaking and coaching. And he said, "Oh, well." would you be able to do a public speaking seminar for the men and women in my organization? And I said, certainly. And he said, great, here's the date. Here's the time you've got three hours. And I thought, Oh my goodness, three hours. How in the world am I going to give these men and women what takes on a college campus anywhere from five weeks, if it's a quarter system to 15 weeks, if it's a semester system. So I went to other professors, mentors that I knew, know who did consulting, and one by one, they all smiled. They said, Duane, a three-hour seminar on public speaking is simple. The real world just wants the nuts and bolts, the tools, the mechanics they need to properly put that presentation together, stand up, and deliver. They don't want everything else we do in the classroom. That was in 1996. And actually, 95, I had the privilege of doing that seminar. And it went very well. And that would become the foundation for all of my teaching, whether I am coaching competitive speakers, working with community college students, or guest lecturing at USC for the School of Public Policy graduate students. I can give anybody everything they need in a short three-hour window to stand up and deliver. And that's because the logistical mechanics of public speaking are incredibly simple. It's just we all study different things. You know, um, when I work with clients in the real world, I'm blessed to work with amazing people, people in science, engineering, um, business, politics, et cetera. And those people studied what they studied. They didn't study speech, so they think it's complicated. I studied speech. It's all I've done for 24 years. And the logistical mechanics needed to properly compose that presentation, put it together, stand up and deliver are incredibly simple. That's why the training can be done in three hours or less. And that also shows why you are so successful, because you were able to distill everything to the essentials, right? And that requires a lot of expertise and knowledge. Well, you know what, Anna, I won't even say a lot of expertise and knowledge. I'll replace that with one word, practice. Practice, doing it again and again and again. Um, a lot of people have the misconception that you have to be brilliant. You don't. It's simple. Um, it's all about practicing and following direction and learning from your mistakes. What do you see as some of the little-known pitfalls to avoid when building confidence? Um, the little-known pitfall, I would say, in one word, pride. I always tell my competitive speakers and my clients, you are only as good as your last performance. Just because your last performance was great doesn't mean the next performance is going to be great. It can be but you need to commit 100% every time you speak. You cannot rest on your laurels. Um, quite some time ago, I had a, a, a client, uh, the CEO of a, of, of a fairly large company here in Los Angeles. He called me up and he said, Dwayne, I just gave a speech and it was horrible. And I said, well, so-and-so, um, tell me how you prepared for that speech. And he laughed and he said, I knew you were going to say that. 
I didn't prepare like I did for the big one. And I said, well, Mr. So-and-so, um, I'm happy to take your money. I'm happy to work with you, but you just told me that you know why this last speech was a failure. You did not properly prepare. And that leads me into the second um, uh, thing I always say to my students regarding pride. Stay humble or you will stumble. You must commit 100% to every speech you deliver. Pride is the little known pitfall that is huge. It's little but huge. Got it. Let's shift the conversation from pitfalls and misconceptions to actually what's possible. How have you been able to help your clients build confidence? Well, um, first of all, I have very, very practical tips um, for helping people control their nerves. Um, And first, let me say, I am not into hocus pocus. I am a meat and potatoes person. Um, so it's, it's, there's, there's no fluff and everything requires a lot of hard work and commitment. I have very practical tools that help people deal with their nerves and um, acquire confidence. In. And before I expand on that, I'll just let you know, again, I can't stress this enough, public speaking is the great equalizer, whether it's a community college student, an 11-year-old child, or the CEO or president of a major company, everybody is afraid to speak. And I can't tell you how many times I've had grown men meeting with me who are shaking and in tears because they've just been bumped from an executive position to a vice president or president's position which now has them speaking. And I also, interesting to note, I've never had a woman get tearful tearful, or declare public speaking makes her want to cry. However, I hear that from men all the time. Public speaking makes them want to cry. And I've had several men in my presence break down and just start crying because they have to give a presentation in one week or two weeks or three weeks as a result of their success. That's something else. If you are successful, you will speak. So you need to plan. If, if success in this life is part of your plan, part of your plan must also be learning how to speak properly. So um, first half of this, uh, half, first half answer of this question is I give practical tips, which we don't have time to get into. But uh, the second half is stressing the importance of preparation. And if you are prepared, when you stand up to speak, your nerves are going to be cut in half. You can't completely eliminate the nerves. I I tell people, you can't get rid of the butterflies in your stomach, but you can get them to fly the direction you want them to fly. And you do that by being prepared. Um, You you look at it this way. You've got, let's say you're speaking on Friday and you are prepared on Monday. That means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or whatever you enjoy. You just get to look over your notes. When you stand up to speak, you're going to be thinking, ah, I'm nervous because there's no way to completely eliminate that. But you're also going to be able to think, but I'm ready. And you are ready. And you're going to deliver that presentation. And moments into it, you're not going to feel as nervous as you otherwise would. And the message is going to be successfully communicated. Option B, you throw something together Thursday night for your speech you're giving Friday. When you stand up, you're going to be thinking, oh, I'm so nervous, and this is going to be a train wreck. I wish I had prepared. And you know what? It is going to be a train wreck. It's a train wreck that that particular speaker deserves to experience because in not properly preparing, they're not showing the audience that they respect them, and they're not showing the people who they represent any respect. Preparation is everything. And often people will tell me, I did prepare, but it was still a horrible experience to which I respond. There's a difference between doing your homework and doing your homework correctly. Ten hours of no focus in preparing a speech is not as valuable as two hours with focus, two hours with a plan for organizing your thoughts and structuring your information. 
that's when I offer people a plan to organize everything that they would otherwise not have. And that cuts their anxiety in half. I, I, I totally believe that. And I totally believe that the unprepared speaker has a valuable experience not being prepared once. The experience of contrasting what it is like when you are prepared, right? Yeah. Like, what inspired you to create the business that you created and do the work that you do? Well, like I mentioned before, um, my life has been about coaching competitive speakers. I started speech as a competitive speaker, and then by the grace of God, years later would be invited to run a program myself. And that was at Los Angeles Valley College from 2000, from 2000 to 2015. I was the director of the public speaking team at Los Angeles Valley College, recognized as one of the most successful programs in the country. Um, a, neat, neat, a neat side note, it was Los Angeles Valley College where I was asked to join the speech team in 1991, and then it would come full circle years later, I'd be asked to come back and run the program. And I'm so thankful for that wonderful opportunity. And in 2008, it, everything kind of really peaked when the school, when our team won the national championship tournament. Not only did we win the, the national title, for the best community college public speaking team in the nation. I also was very privileged to have a student on my team named Marcus Hill, who would become the number one overall speaker in the entire nation. So I came home from wow. that success, and um, my wife said, so what do you do now? And I said, what do you mean? She said, what else do you do now that you have your team has won this title? And I thought, well, I said, well, you know, maybe again, we'll, maybe we'll win the title again. And my wife said, no, I mean, you know, we have, I, I, I'm blessed with six children. My wife said, we've got college, we've got weddings to think about. Is there anything you can do in the real world with this? And I said, well, maybe some type of consulting. And with that, my wife was off and running. She created the website, which got everything going. So my lovely better half, after some success with my competitive team, decided that she was going to put together a website for me and offer public speaking consulting for individuals and groups. And that's how that started. Well, there you see the power of what you do, potentiated by the power of like a great wife. Yes, a great wife with a capital G. Yeah. Can you share with us a lesson about confidence that you learned early on and that still has an impact on you today? Yeah, it, it goes back to preparation, Anna. When people ask me what is the most important thing a public speaker does, I say three things. Prepare, prepare, and prepare. And when you're done preparing, prepare some more. When I was a competitive speaker, I was blessed to have a scholarship to Northern Arizona University. And that meant traveling all over the country to speech competitions. And I'll never forget when I first got there, I was resting on the success that got me there, kind of prideful and arrogant. And while it came time to go to our first competition, which was uh, about 13 hours on a bus or a van with the speech team, and we were going to speak at, we were going to compete at a college in Colorado. And I was not prepared. And the whole way, my coaches and my peers on the team were all talking about how great I was going to do because of the reputation that I had brought to the school from where I had, you know, my competition passed. And I went to that tournament, and I did not deliver. And that was incredibly humbling and incredibly embarrassing. And the ride home from that competition was the longest ride of my entire life because I was surrounded by successful people on that speech team and everybody had trophies in their laps except for me. And the entire time I was thinking as we drove home, I will never ever again allow myself to not be prepared. And not to mention, you want to talk about the fear of public speaking. 
there's no scarier position to be in than to be standing in front of an audience and you are not prepared to speak to them. And truth be said, at this point in my life, I was being paid to do that. A scholarship to the university that was pay um, for public speaking. And I had not only failed myself, but I failed my coaches and I failed the university that was that was paying for my schooling. So I vowed to never, ever let that happen again. And thank God I have allowed, been able to organize my mind and my life in a way that allows me, when it's time to speak, to properly prepare. Wow. It sounds different when we experience the be prepared part through your story and we see it through your what you were, went through. Thank you for that. Certainly. Here comes a difficult question. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. What is your number one presenting tip? My number one presenting tip? Well, I'm sorry to, to, to beat a dead horse, but it's be prepared. Actually, you know what? Um, I would say first, know your audience. Know your audience. And you do that by asking and answering three questions. Who is my audience? What do they want? And how will I give it to them? The audience is so overlooked. I tell my students in the classroom, your number one concern is always your audience. The most important thing you do is prepare, but your number one concern is your audience. You have to have a plan for connecting with that audience, and that begins and ends with asking and answering three simple questions. Who's my audience? What do they want? And how will I give it to them? That's, that's, a, that's a really powerful tip and I love how you structure it into questions. Who are your favorite speakers of our generation? Who do you well, take inspiration from? Well, I've got two. One is the late, great broadcaster, Paul Harvey. You know, when he died, he was the most listened to man in the world. And I had the privilege of reading an interview with him in the LA Daily News about 15 years ago. And he was asked, what is the secret to your communication style? And he said, my Aunt Betty theory. And the reporter said, well, what, is, what, what, what does that mean? And he said, when I started in broadcasting, I had an Aunt Betty. She was 103 years old. She had a third grade education, and she was a traditional stay-at-home housewife. He said, I always spoke in a way, I always speak in a way that I know if Aunt Betty was listening, One, she would find it interesting, and two, she'd understand it. The end result, 22 million people would tune in every day to listen to Paul Harvey speak. And that leads me to a acronym I always share with my students, and that is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. You can also look at, at it as keep it short, stupid. Audiences want clarity and simplicity. Whether you are speaking to a room full of engineers or a room full of traditional housewives with a third grade education, all audiences want simplicity and clarity. Another example I have would be the pastor at my church. His name is John MacArthur, and he has what he, he, he practices what he calls purposeful neglect. Anytime he is getting ready to put together a, an important message, he practices purposeful neglect. I saw him in an interview. He was asked, uh, what is the secret to your, com your communicative style? He said, purposeful neglect. Everybody in the audience, myself included, was like, what the heck is that? Even the person on stage said, well, can you explain? He said, yeah. When I have to deliver an important message, before I deliver that message, I practice purposeful neglect. I neglect the golf course. I neglect TV. I neglect recreational reading. I neglect everything until I am ready to stand up and deliver that message. So there's a, a wonderful example of a high-profile broadcaster um, doing his thing that I really appreciate, Paul Harvey. And then the wisdom from the pastor at my church, uh, 
Dr. John MacArthur and the practice of purposeful neglect. That's like a wonderful, wonderful tip, both of them, right? Like I am already thinking of who my aunt Betty is going to be. <laughs> so how can someone find out more about your work? Well, um, I always, well, first of all, you know, when people are searching for a public speaking coach, I tell them, do your due diligence. Um, this is perhaps one of the most important investments you will make, help finding someone to help you um, sharpen your number one skill set. And with that, I always encourage people to evaluate the testimonials at my website, it's publicspeakinglosangeles.net. It's spelled just like it sounds, publicspeakinglosangeles.net. And I tell people to compare my testimonies to any and all testimonies of everybody else out there. I, I'm very honored and privileged to say I think my clients and their testimonies are second to none. The, my testimonies are detailed uh, testimonies from my clients that testify to the fact that I, I give what I say I will give. And that is I will give you everything you need in three hours less or less to help you properly prepare, stand up, and deliver any and all presentations. And why I say do your due diligence is you can compare my program and my testimonies to everybody else out there. And I believe that I'm second to none. And people are also, they're welcome to call me. Um, my phone number is 818-723-2903. Again, that's 818-723-2903. I'm blessed to be very, very busy. So most likely you will get my voicemail. Um, but I will get back to you immediately. And at my website, you can also uh, send me an email. So through my website or calling me, and uh, I also will talk to people for as long as they like and answer as many questions. A lot of people, again, public speaking number one to your life, so people are very, very timid about doing this. And I will often speak with people several times over several months before they will take that leap and allow me the privilege of helping them. But that's how you contact me, either through my website or by giving me a call. And that's a perfect note to complete our interview today. Till Thank next you. time, remember, your awesomeness is portable. You can take it with you anywhere. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.